We multiply two multi-digit numbers by one another. First, align them according to their place value, like we did with addition and subtraction. Um, and then what? So I'm going to kind of keep a tally of how this algorithm works. What's the first step? Go from right to left. Okay. So we're going to start with the ones digits, and then we're going to work our way towards the tens and the hundreds. What's the first ones digit that we often work with in this problem? So the first product that we end up doing is 1 times 5. Um, let me try and highlight that. So the first product ends up being 1 times 5. That gives me 5. What's the next product? The next step that we do. Right, so we keep that same ones digit, five, but now we multiply it by the tens digit of the first one of these. And so we get seven times five, that's going to give us 35. Oops. But then because this is a digits problem, we can't have something bigger than 10 in, those, in that spot. So we put the five down here and we carry the three up top. And again, that's going to be a step we won't have to do when we do this with polynomials, but for now, something we need to, to sweat. And then what's the next product? Two times five is ten, so it's three. That's right. So we do two times five. That gives me, the again, the ones digit. Uh, two times five gives me ten. And then this carried three gets added to it, and we end up with thirteen. And there, because it's the last, the furthest most to the left, I don't have to worry about carrying. I can just write thirteen as it is. So what we've done is we've taken this five in the ones place, and we've multiplied it by each of the three digits from my first uh, number. Great. Then what happens? So here what we did to start was we, we multiplied the, the ones digit by every digit in the other factor. So then what happens next? Yeah. So we'll come in here and we'll put in a placeholder of zero in which place? In the, ones. in the ones place. So right here we'll put in a zero. Or sometimes, depending on depending on where you learn this method from, sometimes people will put an X here in the placeholder. Sometimes they'll just leave it as a blank space in your arithmetic. Whatever you need to do to remind yourself that we're not going to do any actual arithmetic in that space. And instead, where does our arithmetic start? in the tens place. So now is when that next digit, the digit of 3, comes into the puzzle. And so I'll start by multiplying the 3, the tens digit of the second factor here, with the ones digit of the first. 3 times 1, that's going to give me 3. And that ends up in the tens place. And then again, we work our way across, multiplying the tens digit of that with every single digit from the other. 7 times 3, 21. So that leads me to carry a 2 this time. And then 2 times 3, 6. Adding that to the 2 gives me an 8. So my second step was with a placeholder in the ones place, uh, multiply the tens digit by every other digit. So how many total multiplications did I do in this problem? I had to multiply the 5 by each of these three digits. I had to multiply the 3 by each of those digits. How many products, how many multiplications did I carry out? Six of them. The total is six products in order to make this happen. Why six? Because three times two, right? Every one of the digits, every one of the three digits in the first factor needed to be multiplied by every one of the two digits in the second factor, so the total was three times two, six multiplications that we had to do to make this whole thing happen. All right, so we did all of our multiplications, but we still don't have an answer. So what happens last? Yeah, and so the last part of the process is adding. And conveniently, 
and not accidentally, we have applied this algorithm in a way that makes the same digits with the same place value are already lined up one with another. And so it's already in a good position for us to just add. And when that addition happens, <coughs> it just goes directly down the columns, as addition does. So we plug in what we know about how to add in a traditional algorithm. 5 plus 0, 5 plus 3, 3 plus 1, and 1 plus 8. And that ends up being our answer. Whoops. That is way too big of a box. There we go. 9,485. And so our last step was add. Uh, add in columns. In other words, add normally, but I just wanted to emphasize there. So that's the traditional multiplication algorithm. Your task for the next 10 minutes or so is going to be to figure out how to port this understanding of the traditional multiplication algorithm into an understanding of how we can tackle problem number 7. Problem 7 asks you to multiply these two polynomials together, 4v squared minus 5v minus 2 multiplied by 6v plus 7. So that's your task. Figure out how to apply a vertical method to that multiplication. Here are the two solutions uh, that you all came up with. So the first thing that you did uh, was you lined up these two polynomials in the way that we do when we're using a vertical method, right? Lining them up so that the like terms are above one another. This 4v squared doesn't have a like term, so there's an empty space there. And then following the traditional algorithm for multiplication, you said, let's take each of the things which are playing the roles of the ones digit, so these are the constant, uh, constant terms, uh, and multiply each one of those by all of the terms from the other expression. So here we multiplied the 7 by the negative 2. That explains where the 14 came from. We multiplied 7 times negative 5v. That explains why we have a negative 35v sitting right there. By the way, um, we don't need to do any carrying or any funny business uh, in this algorithm because unlike with addition, sorry, multiplication of numbers, uh, it's okay to write a multi-digit number like negative 35 as part of our, uh, as part of our, our term here uh, because there is no way at this stage uh, for us to turn negative 35v into some number of v squareds because those are unlike terms. So we don't have to worry about carrying. That's the beautiful thing about using this algorithm that makes it a little bit nicer in some ways than the algorithm for numbers. 4v squared times 7 explains this 28v squared. And so we end up with that first product being carried out, giving us 28v squared minus 35v minus 14. Both of our solutions had that there. What's interesting is what happens next. Because next, you turned your focus to the 6v term in that second factor that we're trying to multiply. And then you started multiplying it by the three uh, terms from the other polynomial. Um, and 6v times negative 2 gave you negative 12v, and you were very careful here to write that negative 12v underneath the negative 35v to which it is a like term. Right? And that's important because at the end of this process, we're going to have to add, and we want to be able to add down the columns which have like terms in them. And this placeholder 0 is a recognition that anything that I multiply a 6v by is still going to have a v in it. Right? The v is not going to go away. Uh, in any sense. And so we're never going to get something that has no v's in it. So that zero placeholder is still just sitting there. And still makes sense in this context. What happens when we multiplied negative 5v times 6v at the next stage? So we know what happened to the coefficients. They became negative 30. But what happens to the variable factors? What do I get when I multiply v times v? I get v squared. In fact, that's the very definition of v squared, right? It means v times v. Um, and so there is a stage, let me break out that arithmetic for a moment, where now we're using, we're flexing a muscle that we built in the last topic. If I multiply these two monomials together, I can rearrange the order of the multiplication to get the constants together and to get my powers of v together. And how many powers of v do I have here? Uh, what's the secret exponent on this first v? And the secret exponent on the second v? Also a 1. And when I multiply two powers of v together, what happens to the exponents? Yeah, 
Yeah. So now is when we're getting back into the exponent properties that we had in our previous section. We add together the exponents because we're multiplying powers. So the negative 30 carries over, but v becomes v to the power 2. So that's why v squared shows up. And that's why now, when we, now that we're multiplying, we do end up potentially getting some new degrees in our monomial, some new exponents that we didn't have before. Uh, we had v squareds before, um, but now we're kind of getting them from a new place. And our last multiplication that you all carried out was this one, 4v squared times 6v, in which you multiplied the coefficients 4 times 6 to get 24, but then where did v to the power 3 come from? If I break out that arithmetic. four times six, and then I have v squared times v, secret exponent of one, and then when I multiply powers, I add the exponents. So it's that monomial arithmetic that we built up in the previous section that's telling us now how to handle the arithmetic on these polynomials, right? that we end up with v to the third powers that we didn't have before, and we got them from multiplying v to the second powers by v to the first powers. And all of the multiply steps being done, then the last part of the algorithm is just to add. And since everything is already lined up with the like terms in the columns, we can add just by adding down the column, as both of these two solutions did. Negative 14 plus 0 to give us negative 14. Negative 35 plus negative 12, being careful with signs, gives us negative 47 and a v. 28 plus negative 30, giving us a negative 2. And then this 24 on the end, not having a partner, and just carrying down. So there is a successful application of the vertical method for multiplying polynomials. I didn't have to even tell you how it worked, but you all figured it out. It's nice work. <laughs>